This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, I'm going to look through, uh, not work through, a uh, question two from the March June 2016 hybrid exam for paper F5. And it's question two, so although I've got the question on the screen, I think it would be as well if you uh, had printed it out from the SSA website. It's only a 10 mark question, so it shouldn't take us too long. But let's just have a look through what's asked. It says Swin Company offers training courses to athletes and has prepared the following break even chart. And so, although obviously we'll discuss the chart itself in a minute, uh, along the bottom we've got numbers of athletes, at the side we've got dollars. Uh, and you can see they've done it for no athletes, 100 athletes, 200 athletes, up to um, 500. Uh, and what's required? Part A, state the break-even sales revenue with the Swin Company and estimate to the nearest 10,000 the company's profit if uh, 500 athletes attend a training course, so only two marks there. A bit of a rush, even though it should be easy. Part B, using the chart above, explain the cost and revenue structure of the company. Well, first of all, make sure we can interpret the lines. And this fits rather than both part A and part B. But it is fairly conventional, even though the shape of some of the lines may be a bit worrying at first glance. Uh, but line A, that must show the total revenue. Uh, that for zero uh, athletes, the revenue is zero. The more athletes, the more the revenue. So that line must be total revenue. Uh, the other two lines, well, line C, surely, must be the fixed costs. I know there's a step up here. We can discuss it for part B in a minute. Uh, but for no athletes, we're 20,000. Uh, once we have 200 athletes and more, it jumps up to 40,000. But that must be the fixed cost. And finally, line B. Again, forget the precise shape. But that must be the total costs, the fixed plus the variable, because again, uh, if there are no athletes, the total cost is the fixed cost of 20,000. As we've got more athletes, the total cost, the fixed plus the variable, is going up. And of course, not relevant to really to part B, but the difference, the excess of total cost or the fixed cost, this must be the total variable. Uh, so that should all be very clear very quickly. I mean, if you're unsure, uh, you better go back and watch the uh, free lectures on cost, volume, profit analysis. But it is a simple one, none of this multi-product or anything. No problem. Uh, anyway, uh, part A, state the break-even sales revenue. Well, once you have with the lines, it, this should be automatic. Break-even is when total revenue equals total costs. And so profit is zero. Total revenue equals total costs at that point there, which is when we have 300 athletes, but that's not required. It's where the revenue is 90,000. Revenue will be 90, total costs are 90, we're break even. So that's a desperate easy mark. What about the other bit? Do not you want two things? Also, to estimate to the nearest 10,000, the profit in 500 students, uh, 500 athletes, sorry, attend the course. Well, 500 athletes is there. The profit, the difference between total revenue and total costs, the total revenue is 140,000. Now, uh, the total cost for 500, well, it's a little bit over 120,000, but it does say profit to the nearest 10,000. So we don't have to waste any time. Um, to the nearest 10,000, the total costs are 120. And therefore, the profit is 20. Uh, forgive me writing on here. Obviously, in the exam, I write it neatly uh, in the answer book. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to be jumping backwards or forwards. And so, I have now said, a bit of a rush for two marks, but an easy two marks. Uh, and don't forget, you only need five marks to be passing the question. 
And by fact, I spent a few seconds making sure I knew what the lines were. But when I come to part B, again, there's one or two really easy marks, even though, well, we need to think a bit deeper. But let's go on to part B. It says, using the chart above, explain the cost and revenue structure of the company. Well, it, basically, you need to look at each bit in turn. Uh, the revenue, obviously, the fixed costs, the total costs, and I mentioned the variable costs. And so, let's have a look. First of all, revenue. Uh, there does appear to be a little shift in the line there. Uh, for up to 400 students, it's a nice straight line. And so for up to 400, pick any level you want, uh, but the revenue per student, well, at 400 is 120,000. It's for 400 students, and therefore, appointed athletes, sorry, it's because it's said a training course, anyway, uh, it's 300 per athlete. It does then shift a bit. Once we get to 500 students, the total is 140,000 revenue, 500 student uh, athletes, and so it's only 280 uh, per athlete, which is fair enough. Um, you know, for bigger numbers, uh, perhaps, but we are charging a lower price. So that's all really we can say about revenue. Well, we've got another one or two marks there. I think by now we're almost passing it. Uh, fixed costs. Well, there is this step up. I know normally uh, you expect a step up in fixed costs to go up vertical and then jump up. Here, yeah, it's obviously been done in groups of 100. And so all we can say there is for 100 students, it's fixed at 20,000. Once we have 200 or more, it's fixed at 40,000. Now, I'm not going to actually write that down, uh, but there's another mark. And I think we've definitely got our five marks by now and we've passed it. Uh, what about the total costs? Uh, well, because that line keeps changing. First of all, for 100 students, the total cost is 400,000. And so the cost per student, per athlete, sorry, 40,000 for 100 athletes is 400. We already know 20,000 of it is fixed cost. The other 20,000, which is 200 uh, an athlete, is the variable cost. What happens when we get to 200 students? The line shifted. And uh, what is it now? Um, the total is 80,000 for 200. And so, am I right? Yes, 80,000 for 200. Again, it stayed at 400 a student, uh, an athlete. And how's that happened? Well, we did have that sudden jump in the fixed cost. So it's now uh, 40,000 for 200. It's 200. Um, per uh, athlete. The variable cost, therefore, has stayed the same. That's 200 as well. Uh, there appears to be another change here. At that position, the total cost is 90,000, and that's for 300 uh, athletes. And so the cost has changed to 300 uh, per athlete, the total cost. And why has that happened? Well, the fixed cost is 40,000. And so per athlete, the fixed cost absorbs that. hundred and thirty three point three three per athlete. And so the variable cost uh, has fallen. Comes the scale of things. If it's 300 in total, the variable cost must be 300 minus 133. It's 160 
6.67. So the variable cost was 200 athletes. Once we get to 300 athletes, the variable cost falls, 166.67. And the angle of the line then remains constant. And so there's no further changes. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, again, to get your five mar uh, pass marks, I think, I really think it's very easy. Part A is easy. Part B, there are marks simply for describing what the lines are. And I think fixed costs on its own is very easy. Revenue should be pretty easy. Uh, and that would have got you more than half marks and passed it. The one that takes more time is talking about what happens to the total cost and all the variable cost. Uh, but I hope I said enough. Okay, we'll leave that one there.